want to um, make uh, slaves of their women simply because this is their way of um, backward thinking. These people need to be criticised. Criticise the way of thinking of the Muslim Brotherhood, which is extremely in insidious and infiltrating our way of thinking. Well, that if that is Islamophobia, then I'm the first of the Islamophobists. If you criticise um, Wahhabi Islam, which will um, sentence a 70-year-old woman to so many lashes simply because she uh, allowed 25-year-old men to come and visit her to uh, bring her something. Well, this is absolutely ridiculous and needs to be criticised. If this is Islamophobia, criticising this kind of behaviour, then I'm an Islamophobe. We must not wait here. We must not be undecided. Those in my, who, in my view, uh, can, uh, say that we're in a war of religion, this is totally wrong, I think. Those who are speaking of a shock of civilizations are wrong too, in my opinion. But we have a confrontation, a shock of values. And this is not something which opposes the North and the South. It's not something which opposes... Um, Muslims and non-Muslims. There are also non-Muslims in the e extreme left wing, f for example, who defend a very backward way of thinking in the name of cultural relativism. And I think this is the worst kind of racism. Those who say directly or insidiously that everyone is uh, open to universal values except Muslims because that's what it's all about it's people saying that democracy is a very good thing but only for the north it's to consider that freedom of expression is an extraordinary thing but it's only good for large European countries and for uh, Arab countries for Africa and for other developing uh, regions of the world it's no good and this is this kind of way of thinking which leads to um, the beating of a young woman who's been holding hands with a young man or it leads to a situation where 12 year old girls as in Iran are married off forcibly as in Yemen as well because it's divine law that ordains it this is the shock of values with which we are confronted today. And the West, and I'm repeating this, because it's a very important thing, Western societies must be aware of what is at stake, what is at stake, which is ideology. We spoke about legislation. We must speak about policies as well. Because even if there are laws, even if there is legislation which allows one to say things, because we're in a democracy, and when this kind of leaden um, blanket comes down of us, on us, and where people self-censor expression or do not allow others to... Um, use a right which they have by the, cons by the rights of the constitution then the things are uh, situations getting very difficult and perhaps in 10 years from now we shall meet again and we will have a situation which is far worse than it is today Durban 1 Durban 2 and if there's going to be a Durban 3 some kind of folklore will start and it's going to open a new era not a very nice one so I can tell you there's an ideology which is, and I can tell you for 20 years now, I have been working on this subject. It's been 20 years since I started denouncing religious extremism in Islam. It's 20 years since I've been called an alarmist. Now, I will probably continue being that because all the alarm bells that I have been 
trying to ring, uh, I unfortunately was right to do that because things have proven to turn out the way I feared. Now, we're going to have a folklore if we continue like this, and the situation that we're going to see will be absolutely farcical, and in reality, we'll speak of the, not just uh, the fact that we will no longer be able to criticize the ideological transformation of religion. And I'll finish now by saying this. You'll see the situation of the Western societies. Everyone's heard of um, the revisionist Bishop Williamson. Uh, and, of course, everyone was up in arms. But it should have been... In fact, uh, people should have heard the um, speech of a, an, an Islamic imam, he said that the Jews were punished three times, first by the Babylonians, first then by the um, Romans, and the, he said that next time he hoped it would be the Muslims. And this was disseminated very widely on the internet, and a large part of the Islamic word her world heard this. If this is not fascism and incitement to hatred, I don't know what is. These words were published one week after the words of uh, Williamson. Everyone condemned Williamson, but on the other side, nobody said anything, and nobody wanted to hear it, nobody wanted to say anything and nobody wanted to see it. This is an illustration what the, of what the Western societies and the Western uh, elites and the Western policies are in their fight or lack thereof against this poison that is threatening all of us. Thank you. To continue this very important debate on limits, should there be limits or shouldn't there be any, I don't think you can say that there is no country where there is no restriction of freedom of expression. I mean, we have no competition there. The question nowadays is to know whether one should encourage or restrict discourse which may lead to um, hatred, uh, expressions, pogroms, violence, or whether one should uh, suppress a critical discussion and um, expression of ideas. Now, homophobia is completely different to Islamophobia. Homophobia means um, hatred of a person because of that person's existence, because of what that person is. If we said that homosexuals are monkeys and they do not uh, they, they have the right to life, what sort of argument can one oppose this? This is not a debate, a uh, discussion of ideas. This is simply um, an accusation against a category of the population inviting people to kill them. And this need to be, needs to be restricted in the name of anti-racism. It's not because some people use anti-racism to stop a discussion of ideas and criticism of religion. We should not have... This does not mean that we shouldn't have any anti-racist laws. Islamophobia is not the same category as homophobia. Islamophobia does not mean a hatred of... Muslims, because they are Muslims, they are human beings. If someone said um, if Muslims are inferior human beings and should be exterminated, then I think Mr. Dudidien would be quite right in condemning this, and I would be quite happy to um, have a symbolic fine. But this is a th this statement would be something that would incite to hatred and violence. 